What does a Venus flytrap, an earwig's wings and a grasshopper's legs have in common? They're all natural examples of energy being stored in one state and effortlessly changing into another state. What would it take for engineers to develop materials that do the same? We're trying to generate a material that can do pretty cool stuff, but it, it's still simple stuff, but it can do it without almost any intervention. This element has like a two stable states. So it is stable in this configuration, also stable in, uh, in this configuration. So currently uh, this is in uh, all the elements in one configuration and I can just uh, trigger Andres Arieta leads the Laboratory of Programmable Structures at Purdue University. Him and his team are working on something called metamaterials, which are materials that combine the best characteristics of individual materials to form one better material. These kinds of solutions are bringing ingenuity to a variety of industries, including robotics, aviation, and even architecture. The specific um, work that we have been uh, doing on metamaterials is actually uh, trying to generate some properties that we called programmable in the sense that uh, we're able, after the material is being made, we're able to actually significantly change the behavior of it in a controllable way. So can you give me some examples of how you do that? We've been doing that by arranging in a network what we call bistable units. And these units uh, are essentially just like the slab bracelets that perhaps uh, we used to play with when we were uh, young. Like a snap band, a bistable unit is just that. Stable in two different configurations. In one state, it has stored energy. In the other, the energy is released, often with a snap. Professor Arietta's team began with a pop-up dome, 3D printed from thermoplastic polyurethane. By pressing with a finger, the dome would snap to become either convex or concave. When they printed a 3x3 grid of these domes, they began to see new behaviours. What we do with connecting them is essentially creating a metamaterial that has many different possible configurations. And each of these shapes has associated to it a different mechanical property. By pressing certain domes in or out, the sheets formed various shapes. The bistable domes combining to form a new metamaterial, which they call hierarchical multi-stability. What's more, the dome-based metamaterial is able to store energy. So every time you uh, switch one of these units from its as-made state to its inverted state, you have to put some energy on it. But that energy is stored in the material, and this is what makes it a, a metamaterial in a way, that you can really significantly alter the, the behavior of this uh, material by playing with the local arrangement of these units. They look really fun to play with, but how can tech like this be useful? We have a bistable gripper that is internally pressurized and then the domes are inverted and then the energy that is saved into those domes and that causes the formation of the gripper, it's then there to hold onto an object without any more provision of energy. The gripper is sprung-loaded by the inverted domes to close on an object in response to air pressure in the surrounding environment. Many robots are, in certain ways, mimicking anthropomorphic constructions or, or some sort of animal construction. But then that means our uh, actuator systems are very localized. So we would have a joint and then there would be an actuator at the joint and this actuator would only really extend their arms or change the angle, etc. But if we could make the arm in a way that it, it would store some energy, we could do the trick that we did with the gripper of using just one input pressure and just one control input and then generate a complicated reconfiguration. Storing energy in structures is a trick used all the time in nature. 
and Professor Arietta and his team see no harm in stealing some ideas. Insects are very clever in using their exoskeleton and their morphology to, to create functionality. For example, uh, insects use this protein called wrestling. And uh, wrestling is essentially a very good spring. So they store energy on, on their joints of wrestling and then they release them very quickly. And this is one trick that insects use to, for instance, jump very high. So in a similar vein, uh, we see that we can generate storage of energy in, for example, flexible robotics. And then this energy can be released quickly to generate fast movements. This is one application. And uh, we have illustrated that on, on a previous uh, work that we did um, on this insect called the earwig that has an origami-like wing that reconfigures very nicely. The ability of an earwig's wing to quickly spring out from one state to another could be replicated in the designs of robots, packaging, spacecraft and biomedical devices. OK, let me see if I've got this right. Your metamaterials store energy in order to quickly change so that they can respond or adapt to different environments. But how can they be also used to make simple computations? So, of course, the first computers were mechanical. The Abacus is a very simple mechanical computer. If we were able to do some more computation at the edge, actually, the skin of the machine itself or the load carrying structure of buildings or bridges or aircraft, then we would be able to take a lot of the data that it's generated by the interaction with the environment and uh, leave the computational power to really do high level decision making. It's not a crazy idea. Professor Arietta and his team studied the Venus flytrap, an example of an organism that's able to perform a simple computation responding mechanically to stimuli on the hairs inside its trapping mechanism. If you touch two hairs in a small time frame, and the plant doesn't have a brain, doesn't have a neural system um, as we know it, but still this is a computation. The hope is this could be replicated on the surface of an engineered structural robot, pre-programmed to react to external stimuli and computing a simple movement saving energy and computational power coming from elsewhere. So if we could leverage these properties of metamaterials in terms of their ability to reconfigure, to change their properties, and even to conduct some simple computations, we would see machines that would have some, something akin to reflexes and something akin to instinct that would um, allow them to respond quickly and hence be able to operate in more chaotic environment and allow us to concentrate our resources to then create better performing machines by simplifying this complexity of the world. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.